Hey guys, welcome to the garage. Welcome to this video. This video is episode seven in my electrical series and this should be the last episode because now the wiring is done. remember in the first couple of videos I initially made a wiring diagram of what I wanted this electrical system to be it was more uh, just kind of from the battery to the fuse block up to the dash and then I had some switches in there and I built it off of that I started off of that but then as it got more uh, complicated I abandoned that wiring diagram <clears throat> or I had built it as far as I could off of that wiring diagram and then I built it to the car. So I built it depending upon um, like the switches that I got, the lights that I got, where things needed to be positioned, if I got mirror lights, if I got uh, a light bar, whatever. So I finished the wiring harness just building it on the spot. Now what I've done is since it's done over the last couple of days I've been out here building the wiring diagram off of the car. So what I have now is a uh, a wiring diagram that is exactly what I have in the car. Now, if you guys want that, that's awesome. You can have it. All you got to do is email me at dougbugbuilder at gmail.com. I'll put that in the video. I made it in Microsoft Visio, so I can give you a Visio file format. I can give you JPEG or I can give you a PDF. So just send me an email if you want it. Um, it might help you guys with your bug builds. I. I it's unlikely that you're going to be able to build it exactly as the wiring harness is, but you know, if you want to move some pieces around or find out how I did the, the turn signals and the hazards and the, the wiring going to the engine and whatnot, it's, it's a pretty good resource for that. All right. So starting inside what we're looking at here, we've got the dashboard. I've got labels on here. These are just for the initial mock-up when I actually do the final build on the um, bug. I'll make these, I'll make them nicer. Especially if you get over here, it just kind of turns into chaos with all, the, with all the marking. But let me run through this real quick. When I turn the battery on at the disconnect, it sends power to the GPS unit. I can run this or I can uh, leave it off, it doesn't matter. But when I turn that on, it sends power to the GPS. It also sends power to my USB outlet here and it also has a little volt meter in there so I can tell what the voltage is. Right now it's 13.1. And then there's two USBs on that. So that's kind of nice. I've got six switches running across, but I staggered them. They're at different elevations. The reason I did that is when, I'm get, when I get in here and I'm running the engine, these switches are what I have to worry about. This is my ignition. This is, sends voltage to the motor. And this is for the fuel pump. When I turn the motor off, I need to turn all three of those off. These switches over here are for accessories. This one's for the off-road lights. These two are not used yet. These are futures for whatever I want to put on here for future lights, which I'm sure I will, but I don't know yet, so I just added those two in there. Then what I did is down here I've got backup light and dome light. The real reason that I did that is I wanted the dome light down here away from any of these other switches because if my wife's in the car and let's say I'm not in the bug, maybe I'm out on the trail moving something around or something and she wants to turn the dome light on I want it real easy for her to be able to find and not have her have to worry about wondering what any of these are so I moved this down kind of off by itself it's right next to the USB plug which really if she's riding passenger all she's gonna ever be using is the USB plug and the dome lights and then I needed one more switch location for the backup lights, so I just put that right next to it because behind the dashboard there was a good space for that so that's why I put that there then come down here, this is just a push button start switch. 
Over here I've got, this is the alternator light, this is the oil light. When I turn voltage onto the motor, those light up. When the motor starts up, they go off. Then these two lights down here are my turn signals. Then if I come over here, I've got my headlight, high beam, low beam. I've got my marker lights, my identifier lights. The LED headlights that I put on here have built-in uh, halos. So they've got a, a white halo or an amber halo. So I installed a switch here where I can, independently of the headlights, turn on the white halo or the amber halo. And then down below here, I have my turn signal switch. So up front, I've got, these are my, uh, I call these my mirror off-road lights. These are LED, basically fog lights. They're, they're not really projectors. They just kind of make a bright pattern. If I turn the turn signals on, I've got this wired in as my turn signal, which is like super cool because it's, it's nice high, it's easy to see. So I couldn't, I couldn't not mount it on the mirror just for that. Then on the uh, one piece front end, I've got an LED here. And then I've got an LED here. They're not super bright, but those are kind of my uh, turn signals and marker lights on the front end here. Then as we come to the back of the bug, I won't spend a lot of time here because I've already gone over this a little bit. We've got the, uh, the, the outside tail and brake lights. We've got the actual brake lights. I've got my uh, third, this is a tail light and a brake light. I've got the wiring harness running through here for the motor. I've got my off-road lights. Those have nice little uh, plugs on them so I can disconnect them to take the uh, engine cage off. I've got an LED light back here for the license plate. And that's about it as far as the electrical on the back. So that's pretty it for the wiring on the bug itself. I'm really happy with it. Um, hasn't given me any problems. I think I've settled on my fuse, fuse sizes and whatnot. But anyways, let's go inside and do a little walkthrough of the wiring diagram. All right, guys, so now we're looking at the wiring diagram here. We're looking at it in Visio. You can see that it's, it's made up of three pages. The way that I laid this out is very specific to how it actually is in my car, in the Baja, meaning this portion back here are the uh, rear tail lights and the brake lights. This portion here is the engine. This portion here are the batteries, disconnects, and the fuse block, which is mounted right above my transaxle. And then if you come up here, this is my dashboard section. And this are the lights up in the front of the bug. So when I look at this wiring diagram, it's very easy for me to tell exactly what I'm looking at because it's laid out just like the bug. We'll start with the, section, the center section here because this is what this is what I started building. Uh, now on mine here, I'm running the lithium batteries. I've got a lithium battery here, and I don't yet, but I plan on having a second lithium battery. The only run reason I'm running two lithium batteries is because um, the lithium batteries are actually a little bit undersized for the engines that I'll be cranking over in this thing. So I wanted to put two in there. And then I have a uh, independent disconnect switch for each battery because the lithium batteries are very sensitive with their voltage. They're not supposed to be under 10 volts. <clears throat> so I put in separate disconnects so that uh, I have the option of isolating them by themselves or turning them both on or having only one on or one off or, or whatever I want to do. And now up here you'll see that these switches are laid out just like my switches on the um, actual dashboard. So like these three switches here are my ignition and my uh, power to the motor and then my fuel pump. And then right next, to, right next to these, but a little bit lower on my dashboard are my accessory switches. And then below the accessory switches, I have my backup lights and my dome lights. So it, you know, depending on how you wire yours up, it could be completely different, but I drew this up this way because it makes it so that when I look at it, it's really easy to tell exactly what switch I'm looking at. And then over here on the far left hand side of the dash, on the other side of the steering wheel, I've got all of my headlight switches, the halo switches, the turn signals, um, marker lights, 
And then over here, I've got the engine crank, which is mounted really low on the dashboard, and then the brake switch, which is actually mounted all the way down on the master cylinder. And then behind the dashboard, I've got the flasher right here, which is feeding the uh, hazard switch and the turn signal switch. And then if we come down here, this is my brake light converter. This is just the same brake light converter that you would get at a uh, like um, O'Reilly's or AutoZone or anything like that. And it's actually meant for trailers. But what I'm doing here is I didn't want to have amber turn signals on the back of the bug. So I installed this uh, tail light converter and it takes, this here is my uh, tail lights. This is my left turn. This is my right turn. And then this red wire is my brake light. Now, if you notice on the output of the converter, I've got my tail lights, my left turn, and my right turn, but there's no brake light. Well, where did it go? The brake light converter actually takes the brake signal, and when you apply the brakes, it will just send voltage to the right and left turn signals to illuminate them. Now, if you have the turn signal active at the same time that you apply the brakes, let's say that you've got the left turn signal active, and you're also stepping on the brakes. Well, the converter is going to send power through the right turn signal as solid, so it'll be the brake light. But then for the left brake, it's gonna actually flash it because it's got your turn signals on. So that's why I put that in there. It's mounted up in the dash and then it feeds back to the lights. Now, if you notice up here, I intercept the right and left turn signal before it goes into the converter and I use that for my front turn signals because I don't have any brakes in the front, obviously, and I do have amber turn signals and marker lights in the front. So I wanted to intercept the power for those before it goes into the brake light converter. And then up here, um, there's a lot of activity going on for the headlights because I've got the high beam and the low beam right here, but then the LED headlights that I installed have an amber and a white halo effect. So this wire here is for the white halo, and this wire here is for the amber halo. So back here, we've got the motor, nothing too fancy here. We've got just a regular old school oil pressure switch. We've got the ignition coil. I've got my fuel pump, which has its own standalone switch. And then the, uh, the center switch up on the dash just sends power to the alternator. And well, it's not drawn in here, um, but if you have a carburetor with electric choke, you would use that to feed the electric choke as well. Now you'll notice on here, all over this wiring diagram, there's some places where I drew the ground, like I drew a ground on the oil pressure switch, but I didn't put the ground in for the fuel pump or the ignition coil or even um, on some of the brakes and tail lights and whatnot. The reason I did that is if, if I drew in all of the grounds all over the place, this uh, wiring diagram would just turn into a, a spaghetti mess. So. I kind of went with the assumption that for the most part, if, if you guys are wiring this car up, you're also going to need, you're also going to know where you need all of your grounds and you're going to take care of that. So you will find on this wiring diagram that not all of the grounds are drawn in there. So on the back here for the taillights, just like the rest of the wiring diagram, it's basically drawn out just like it is on the bug. So this is my two brake lights that are on either side of the back window. This is my third brake light that's right above the engine underneath the back window. And then grouped together here, I've got the brake lights and the backup lights. And then on the back of the motor cage, I've got my license plate light. And then if you notice here in one of my other videos, I talked about the using the diodes to lower the voltage for the LEDs for the tail lights. That's I've got that drawn in right here. I'm just showing one diode and then I put in there times four so that you know that there's that I used four diodes to um, lower that. Uh, I also did that in the uh, in the front. Again, right here, same thing, feeding the identifier, the marker lights up front. I drew a diode and I put times four so that you know that there's four diodes there to drop down the voltage for the marker lights. Like I said, if you want one, Go ahead and send me an email. I can give it to you in a Visio file, a JPEG, or a PDF, whatever you want. And uh, 
hopefully that some of the little talk through I gave here will make it a little bit simpler for you. So thanks for watching the video. I hope it helps you guys out some, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.